Okay, Retro Tech, this is when we look around in the, the look, look, maybe look back to build a better look future. Back. It's like, it's um, turntable, but only backwards. Yeah, so this is still Marchintosh, just for a couple more days. Oh, we're nearing the end of Marchintosh. And um, this, and this is all, you know, retro Mac stuff. And so this week, um, and you can, you know, check out these. This is the Apple II, this is Apple II Plus. Ooh. And uh, do you have one of these? Do you have one of these? Oh, um, man, I didn't have one at home, but we had them at school. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, did I did I type many a uh, uh, Apple Basic, sorry Apple Logo, and uh, Print Shop Pro. Lots of Print Shop Pro. Lots of Print Shop Pro, and I played a lot of uh, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. It was like Karateka. That was one. It was Karateka? Yeah, it was like a karate. That's cool. Karate thing. Yeah, um, a lot of good games for the Apple too. Yeah. And so that was part of our um, retrospective. Yeah, and then, you can tell us from a school because that's like that security. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, this My is, favorite. Is this your favorite? My favorite. My favorite. It's the best. <laughs> I could still, like, I could actually probably still do a majority of my work on a, on a Mac SE30. This was a bitchin' machine. This was a good machine. Yeah. Yeah. It was a 6830, right? I think that's what the 30 stood for. It had the expansion slot. Um, Look at this. Yeah, which you could connect an external large monitor. It had SCSI. Go back. Go back to the ports. You want to go back to the ports? Yeah, let's go to the ports. Okay. You had the expansion slot. You had um, the disk controller, SCSI, modem, um, ADB, keyboard, mouse. You could connect to the internet with this. Yeah, so and this was 1989. Um, came out January 1989, and then uh, all the way Built up to October 91. <coughs> yeah, and uh, this was the fastest uh, model with the original black and white. That's right. Compact it was, style. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah, and you could get internal hard drive, I think, and up to 128 megabytes of RAM, which is like even like it's a lot for what this is. Yeah, and a 1.4. What was the speed? I don't remember what the megahertz was. I think it was like 40 megahertz. Yeah, this thing was cool. And, you know, the other thing that it was kind of known for was um, it, it was used to publish, I think, there was a magazine, a specific, or a newspaper specifically. Like, they did it all on one of these machines. Yeah, no, you have this. Thing. You yeah. could connect a, a radius portrait. Yeah. Remember those? This monitor weighed like 87,000 pounds, <laughs> but you could rotate it from portrait to landscape. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I remember my when my dad, my dad had one for his, when he did his writing, and then it passed down to me, and then I, I remember like in my high school, we did, we ran Quark Express on it, and that's how we did the high school newsletter. We did yeah. page, maybe it was PageMaker, we did page layout again on this um, portrait display. 60 megahertz. And then um, next up, so we have a poster from Susan Kerr, and um, I, I, I wanted to make an observation. Yeah. Because it's Marchintosh and everything. And you always hear about Mac and design and Jonathan Ivey. And, uh, and from back in the old Mac days, you hear about Guy Kawasaki. Yeah. But you don't really hear about Susan Kerr, and she's responsible for the entire, she's a creative director during this Mac time, and then also at Next. Yeah. And, um... Great icons. Yeah, fantastic icons. Still still uh, an artist doing these things. But these are, like, the iconic things of computer science, computer history. And so um, I dug up an ad. It was like, it's like a mini ad yeah. um, with her in it, and then a little five-minute interview with her on Computer Chronicles um, because, you know, it's Women's History Month, and also you when you think about, like, Apple... You know, there's only like two or three names, and it's usually not hers. So I thought, well, maybe we can, you know, remind folks, or maybe they don't even know, like, where did these cool icons come? Like, who made that floppy icon? Like, a lot of things that we kind of take for granted there was someone who designed these. Um, so I was going to play those, and then we'll uh, do uh, Python on hardware after this. Move. <laughs> if you're an artist and, and you're skilled with media, this is a new medium that offers great control turning off. There's a thousand little dots in half an inch, and you have the capacity either 
real or magnified to turn off and on each one of those dots. So in a screen that's fairly big or a piece of paper eight and a half by 11, you've just got so many scads of dots. There's nothing really that you can't present on that you screen. Print all, the all you do to print, unlike most computers where you, you know, can hit a control key and a print key sequence, you just uh, hit one button, it says print, and it prints. And you can actually, Bill made it so you can watch on the screen the whole document gradually being printed and follow your progress. It's, it's pretty nifty. Certainly, um, I think one of the best experiences is seeing a person who's never used a Lisa before or a Mac before um, and even never used a computer before. It is possible, easily possible, to teach most people to use one of these computers in about 20 minutes. And a lot of that is because you can explain what an icon means and a person can remember it easily. So we certainly use Lisa as a jumping off point and making just some refinements and additions for some new features. What you see now is the image, the icon that you get when you just plug Mac in and turn it on. It prompts you with a picture of the diskette, see, saying, mm -hmm. I need something. Okay, so. so that all you do is, it only fits in one way, so there's no way you can break it or make a mistake. You just pop it in. You get an image of a content Mac, so you know that everything is OK and you're welcomed. It's just so that the person using Mac gets information all the time, visually, so nothing has to be translated. A little wristwatch to tell you, just wait one second. Things are happening. You, you've replaced the uh, salt timer. Yeah, we're <laughs> moving, into, okay. moving into the 80s. So what do we have now? So what we have now is an image on the screen of the diskette that we put in the slot. And it can be with the mouse. It can be moved. Okay. And it's already showing you the name of that disk. Right. And it's highlighted in the sense that it's inverted so that Mac knows that you want to do something to this diskette. And your choices of what you might want to do are listed in hidden menus that operate a little bit like window shades when you move your okay. cursor right that our choices we could find out something about this diskette or we can just open it or we could eject it but if we open it just say open and immediately you get what we call a window that displays graphically and in words what is contained on the diskette in the machine. So you can see there's a picture of a hand painting, which symbolizes a paint program, and a handwriting for the word processor, and a couple of uh, memos that were already written, some folders. If, say, you want to store a document or two in a folder, um, it's analogous to life. You just put the piece of paper in the folder. Mm -hmm. Now you've got something called the control panel here. Show me what that is. Um, always available to you are a number of desk accessories. Um, so you move the cursor to the control panel, let go of the mouse button. So this, which looks a little bit like a dashboard, um, lets you fine-tune the system in a number of ways to your comfort level or just your personal preferences. Um, the computer will work no matter what setting. So say, here's a little volume control. You can see the speaker. So every now and then you hear a beep with Mac when you turn it on, um, or sometimes during uh, applications. If you're at home by yourself and you're listening to the stereo, you might want to know that you'll always hear those beeps. Mm -hmm. If you're a student working in the library, you can move it so that just the bar will flash so there's no noise at all. Say some of the other features let you adjust keyboard repeat rate or a menu flash or the amount of time between double clicks, which might vary with the age of the person. Pop the control panel away by just clicking on it. And Notepad lets you, while you're working in any application as well as just this, um, what we call the finder, which is like a directory, mm -hmm. be able to um, grab the keyboard and write a note to yourself. Uh, remember to um, read page 12. And you could say, put this away, or you could move it over. Uh, you can go to page 2, where it says uh, another note, one left for oneself. Flip to page 3. 
um, up to eight pages of notes that could help you in your work or just remind you of social events. Um, One of the items was, uh, was scrapbook. Right. Um, scrapbook lets you keep um, literally you're only up to 256 you're only limited by how much memory you have free pictures or messages or documents always available for the terms we use are cutting and pasting right so say to open a word processor application you could click on Mac right and say open if you want to get right to a document which automatically launches the application same procedure which is why it's easy to use we're loading the word processor right. and the to the specific document that um, we can here's a, an old little bit of sample text this is how the word processor appears to you um, a ruler lets you set formats which is certainly a familiar object say you want to go from single to double space just click on the wider image if you want and you can justify or center. We're not going to have time, actually, but you could have pulled up pictures from Mac Paint from the scrapbook and then insert them mm -hmm. into the document. Paste them in just by saying paste from the menu. If you want to change a word to be bold, just say bold. Change the font to something like Old English.